everyone, and welcome, and I'm very excited to see you all again to talk about this, the third section of The Confessions of Lady Nijo, or Tawazugatari, as can be seen right here, um, and as is translated by Karen Brazell, our friend. Um, some interesting things happened. I'm very excited to hear what you think of this section. Um, I just wanted to remind us again of our, because we have um, a couple of, or at least one new person, I believe. So I wanted to refresh our memories of the kind of questions that I asked us to consider. We've been talking about them a lot um, already, but uh, as the book continues on, mm -hmm. some of our thoughts might morph with them, because especially in these next upcoming sections, there's going to be a lot of really interesting things that happen. But um, yeah. The questions are, can we analyze the Tawazagatari the same way we do other works from the Han period, which is the previous period, right? How does Lady Nijo pay tribute to her genre while also transforming it? What reasons could there be for the lack of reception history? As pretty much nobody in Japan <laughs> knows what this book is. Um, and then how trustworthy is Lady Nijo as an author? Um, yeah, so. There's been some interesting episodes in this section of the book. Um, we have the fact that the ex-Emperor Gofkaksa discovers the relationship between Lady Nijo and one of her lovers, Ariake no Tsuki. And rather than being really angry about it, decides that he's going to try and help her out of the situation. Um, Lady Nijo has two births, one of a child that she is forced to give away and another of a child that she is able to keep. Um, we have the rumors about Lady Nijo and Gofkaksa's brother, ex-Emperor Kameyama, start circulating. And this is really the first and pretty much only time, so far at least, that Gofkaksa has finally like had his trust broken <laughs> with Lady Nijo and he starts getting really upset with her and he shuns her, right? And then we have finally Empress Higashi Nijo again tries to send Lady Nijo away and because Gofukaksa is not supporting her, she is finally successful and Lady Nijo does leave. But she comes back at the end for Lady Kitayama's birthday. Lady Kitayama being this older matriarch figure who has always kind of supported Lady Nijo and her family mm -hmm. and is just really important at this time historically in the court, at least from the social perspective. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting because it's a lot of descriptions of what is happening and not so much her own thoughts, which I kind of interpret as just being a little awkward because she's sent away and now she's suddenly thrust back in this situation where she knows everybody, but it's completely on different footing now. And 